Hi, my name is Gordy Hogue, and this is Community Connection. Each of us have stories, stories that help us understand each other and help to bring our community closer together. I have been very fortunate to have met many interesting people. People who've had a positive, profound impact on our community and far beyond. People who've had incredible life experiences and fascinating stories. Community Connections is about these people and about their stories. I'm sure you'll enjoy meeting these amazing people as much as I have. Thank you. Please enjoy. Welcome to Community Connections. My name is Gordy Hoag, and today's guest is a compassionate, well-educated, well-traveled individual who has served many communities extremely well. He is currently chair of the White Rock Muslim Association and a practicing psychiatrist in our community. I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Farhan Hawk. Welcome, Farhan. Welcome to Community Connections. Absolutely, uh, Gordy. It's uh, great to be here. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, growing up and the things that intrigued you and influenced you in in growing up, I understand you were born in Pakistan, and have uh, could talk a little bit about that and uh, where you've uh, how you've transversed uh, through the world to come to our community, and we're so delighted you have. Absolutely. Uh, so, as you said, uh, I was born in Pakistan. So, it was um, uh, in the south southern part of Pakistan, and there's a town called um, Hyderabad. It's actually not a town; it's a big city, uh, quite a cultural. Uh, huge heritage attached to it. So um, uh, I was raised there. I did my uh, school, like I went to a Catholic school, did my high school there. Um, if I talk a little bit about the town, it's um, it's kind of, um, uh, it was built on a ridge besides the river, surrounded by desert. So it was quite hot in the summer, like in the 40, 45. So you couldn't really be outside. So all we did was uh, stay inside, uh, indoors. Um, and there was um, in the houses at that time. They had wind catchers, so they'll 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 help um, uh, get the cool breeze coming in. And at night, it was completely different, uh, cooler nights. So uh, we 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 kind of enjoyed um, uh, our time there. But I got the opportunity to then um, offered an admission to a pre uh, quite a prestigious college in uh, Karachi. So that's a big port city. Um, so I, uh, after I did my high school, I moved to Karachi to um, to do my medical school. So Farhan, did you have uh, siblings as you were growing up? And you talked a little bit about your family? Oh, absolutely, yes. So uh, I'm uh, um, the third, so number three amongst uh, six, all brothers. Uh, so we had, uh, I think we, we had a, a lot of cousins as well, uh, all boys. I know most of them were boys. So we, we used to have um, uh, two teams. Easily we could make teams about soccer and cricket and you 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 name it. And so it was um, it was uh, enjoyable um, living at that time. And my father had died early. I, I think I was about eight years of age. So my mother was a single mom and then we were helped by um, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, uncles. Um, and they, I think they did a lot of charity work at the time as well. Um, and that's some, somehow um, it kind of translated into how things uh, transpired later on as well. Um, so that was uh, what Hyderabad looked like at the time. Uh, and in Karachi, then I did my um, medical school. Uh, it was kind of tough times being away from home. Uh, I had my brother there as well, and then gradually another brother and then a cousin moved over. So we kind of supported each other and I had a fantastic time. I was new to the town, but uh, once again, I'm calling town, it's a big city. Uh, but uh, I made fantastic friends um, uh, while uh, studying there. So after I did my internship, um, I got married. Uh, so my wife uh, was a teacher then. At the time, she taught English. Um, so we were uh, basically uh, in different cities. She was working somewhere else. I was working at another place. Um, and what I did was I, I began exploring different uh, specialties. So I, I tried medicine. I tried nephrology. I went uh, doing uh, emergency surgery, pathology, you name it. Uh, and my wife was still working somewhere else. Uh, we had our first child after the internship period, uh, Saad. 
Um, and after a few years, we kind of became a bit dis disillusioned. Um, she working somewhere else, I working um, in Karachi. So we decided to, to pursue uh, a career in uh, Ireland. Did you meet while you were going to medical school or did, where did you and no, your wife be? No, I, mean, I, I knew her from before and um, somehow uh, our uh, paths uh, crossed each other. Uh, and it was not long before, as I said, uh, we, we, we had a first child and um, uh, we, she did finally transfer over to, uh, to, to Karachi. But it was uh, just right before I was um, uh, leaving for, for Ireland. Uh, so I, I moved to Dublin in uh, 2012. Um, and at, at that time, uh, I, uh, a couple of my friends had already moved over. So people were actually moving to US or England or some other places. But all, out of all the places, we, we, we ended up in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, and she joined me uh, along with Saad uh, a year later in uh, 2003, I think, uh, at the time. Um, so I think my first job was, um, was a small town called Kilkul. Uh, it's about like 40 minutes drive from Dublin, um, beautiful beautiful town. Um, it, there's, there was a famous TV series called Glenrow. So we were just living near the Glenrow farm. We were probably the only, um, or just a few non Irish there, but we had fantastic experience. Like they were really welcoming. Uh, and I, I, the first um, job I had was um, basically a TB sanatorium from before that was converted to, uh, to a psychiatric hospital. Uh, so quite beautiful landscape. Uh, and uh, some fantastic um, colleagues there, mentor, mentors. And so I did my basic training there. Basically, we rotated around, but we, um, we um, established our base in Dublin. Uh, and from there, I did my basic, uh, basic training in psychiatry. Um, following that, I went into specialist training, which is another four, four years, a bit of research here and there. Uh, we did travel around. Uh, we were able to go to um, the other part of Ireland, which was the west part, um, Castlebar, Mayo. Once again, beautiful, beautiful part of the part of part of Ireland. We made lots of friends. Um, uh, once I did my specialization, I um, I was offered a job. Um, uh, so what happened after that was there were different jobs, not a single one. So once again, I had to travel to another city and my family in another city. So that went on for a year. So I'm talking about like 2012. Uh, so I, I went to Cork, stayed there, which is the west part of uh, part of Ireland. Did you, uh, have, did you have just your one son at this point or did you have? Oh or yeah, so in 2005, we were blessed with another son, uh, Raza. Uh, so we were both beautiful soccer mad uh, kids and I got the passion uh, while uh, growing up there. I remember um, uh, waking uh, Saad from uh, he, he, he play matches, but uh, he was uh, in, in the beginning he was quite reluctant to, to do it. So I'd wake up, uh, wake him up uh, early in the morning, drive him to 40 minutes uh, to another uh, town, freezing conditions. We're standing there. He plays five minutes. We go back home. Uh, uh, we kind of continuously did that. The other son started playing soccer at the age of four, um, and both are still still playing, still still soccer mad. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so two two kids. So the, those the, the, they were living in Dublin with my wife, and I was in uh, Cork and other. So I, I I used to wake up five o'clock in the morning and drive two and a half hours uh, from from to to work, stay there for a few nights, a uh, few days, and then then come back. So that went on for the for the year. Quite so that was. Quite a commitment, yes. Yeah. Were you a soccer player too, growing up? Uh, I, I wasn't. I played uh, hockey, volleyball, table tennis, but not cricket. But cricket is um, is uh, so soccer is is not a um, in in Pakistan. You you start with the with a bat and a like a, a cricket bat yeah. and a ball. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Uh, soccer is not not that. Uh, it it, ha it did develop over the years, but uh, soccer was from from Ireland. But yeah. what we did was um, each one of us picked a team from the Premier League in the UK. Uh, so uh, Saad at uh, Manchester United, um, uh, then uh, uh, my son Raza picked uh, Chelsea, I picked Arsenal. 
And then my wife, she had no choice but to pick Liverpool. So all, <laughs> all four of us has, uh, has, have, have a passion about soccer now. Um, so that was, um, that was uh, 2012. Uh, got the opportunity to then uh, have a few friends who had already moved over to BC at the time. Some went to Alberta, some went to, to, to came here to BC. Uh, and uh, a few families were here in South Surrey's uh, White Rock area. A few went to Chilliwack. So the ones that were here, they started um, uh, sort of exploring the option for, for us as well to move over. So we I had the opportunity to be offered, um, I think it was 2013, um, a, a post in Delta Metal Health. So that's in Twasson uh, that I got my first job. Uh, so we moved over in uh, 2013. And because the families were already here, weather-wise, uh, I think it made sense rather than going to Alberta uh, or some other places. It was very similar to, to Ireland. So we thought, yeah, let's, Let's come here, and and uh, since then we've we've been here. So 2013 was where we when we came here. And have you been what area have you been specializing in in terms of your work? Right. So I um my always I've been interested in uh, older adults. So I started with that. Uh, so I did some work in uh, long term care in uh, in Ireland. Then specialization was the same uh, in older adults, and then I extended my work to add general adults just to be able to see everyone. But when I moved over here, most of my work then moved to uh, to look after. So that's a geriatric uh, specialty is is what I specialized in, and I've been working. Uh, most of my work is is related to that, which is community hospitals. So Delta Hospital is 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 my base there. Uh, so I do outpatients, um, inpatients. I do uh, go to long term care facilities as well, and I kind of have a special interest in uh, behaviors associated with uh, with uh, dementia. So that would be quite an interesting field to be in. Do you spend time right across the Fraser Health District or are mostly in the that area? Certainly we have a number of uh, long-term care facilities in, in the South Surrey White Rock area and uh, there's a big need that exists there, particularly during this pandemic. Yeah, so I think it uh, it was only in the past couple of years that I started to move towards long-term care facilities as well, but they're kind of scattered. Uh, some some are in uh, uh, North Surrey, Cloverdale, um, but none. Uh, so the only place I go here is uh, Peace Arch um, Hospital Foundation Lodge, yeah. the new 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 building, yeah. which they have the special unit there, um, especially for for behaviors that are cannot be managed any, anywhere else. Otherwise, uh, it's kind of scattered. So how do you find the, if you're comparing the uh, systems in, in Pakistan, in Ireland, and in Canada, how would you, how, what would the differences or similarities be? Yeah. It, so it's, in, in, in Pakistan, a uh, psychiatrist um, is still going to a psychiatrist is, is considered um, a, a taboo. So you go to a family physician rather than a, rather than a psychiatrist. Uh, like I can give you an example of um, in, uh, in in my hometown, uh, there's no geri geriatric psychiatrist there. Um, so you, you can imagine how where would people go? Uh, in Ireland, there's a there's a system that was mostly based on the UK system where there's a there's a team, and the team is uh, is managed by a psychiatrist. But but there you can do both. There's both urban and rural. Uh, most of the um, uh, facilities in the beginning were were looked after by the by the church, so a lot of nuns uh, uh, were looking after uh, some of the facilities. I, I found that in the rural rural area, especially, uh, and uh, some of the clients were like miles away from each other. If you go and visit someone, you you won't even have a, a, a reception. Uh, and here, in, in when when I started working here. So my first patient could be whoever has moved from Germany. Then my second client could be from Czech. The third client moved somewhere from Scotland. So it's a diverse um, uh, community here. Uh, fantastic. Like Tuas and Ladner is full of uh, those who are so fascinating to hear their stories from World War II and, and thereafter. Um, so I think the system is, a, is, is, is quite different. Clientele is different. The issues remain pretty much the same. So would you primarily be doing then 
uh, care in, in facilities as opposed to uh, people coming to see you in an office or a residential? I think it's a bit of both. Um, so if I give you an example of Ireland, I, I, I got trained where you'd have every bit of uh, work, like different sort of work uh, within your post, such as outpatient, inpatient, long-term special units, um, and then hospital. And I've tried to mask that up here as well. So I, I, I like diverse diversity rather than uh, just uh, being uh, confined to one one part of um, uh, the work. So that's how I've developed over the past couple of years to include everything. So with our system that we went to health authorities about uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago on a more generic model, uh, would you, how would you see the strengths of our, of our system? And are there areas that you would think that we should be focusing on or concentrating in terms of ensuring that uh, we have the best possible care for, uh, for the residents of our province? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's only in the past, as I said, a couple of years that I've started um, working in long-term care facility. Of, of course, funding for educational purposes and for caregivers uh, would be fantastic as well. Uh, COVID-19 has completely changed everything. So a lot of my work began when COVID-19 hit. So I was able to, uh, I wasn't able to go to facilities in person at times. Like I'd go to one place four days later, they'll tell me that there is, there's an outbreak. So I, I'd go to, uh, I'd switch over to virtual. Um, so most of my work this year has been in long-term, which is just completely different. So funding is definitely one that can be, um, um, especially for, as I said, uh, for, for those areas where you could do a, a lot more than just um, medication piece. A, a lot of other things can be, can be managed, but can be explored, can be expanded. Over, over time. Certainly the, the building you're uh, going to in White Rock is a relatively new building. And yeah, fantastic. Some, some hospice care on the ground floor and uh, some more, uh, I guess it's, uh, it's a lot of palliative care as well and a wide range mm -hmm. of things there. So the, the area there that you, that you work in, is that, uh, is that a, that's obviously a residential area. And, and are you on call there or is it uh, do regular rounds or how does that work for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm there every week uh, and it's a team effort. Um, nothing can be done just by the physician, of course. Yeah. So we've got nurses, occupational therapists, uh, social workers. Um, so there's a, there's a team involved. So I go, I go there once a week um, and if, if needed, uh, I go there uh, more often than, than that. So we are pretty much um, uh, on the other side of your email or, or phone if anything yeah. needs to be done. Uh, but otherwise, as a team, we, we sit down and go through uh, what has happened the past week, what do we need to do today, what are we going to do next, and how long, uh, and what's the plan in, in future. So it's kind of short term and medium, medium term. So that's a place only for, for specialized needs. Once the needs are over, like the behavior is settled, then uh, they move on to long-term care. That's the idea. Dramatic. I mean, my father was one of the first family physicians in this area. Yeah. He traveled to the closest hospital was Royal Columbian. So he went there right. every morning and dealt with that. And then, of course, he was doing house calls. Uh, every, he could home at 6 o'clock and expect we'd right. have family dinner. And then he was gone again. And somehow our mom had us convinced that if we were well-behaved, we could go on house calls <laughs> with him. I don't know how she tricked us into that, but she, she just wanted to get rid of us, but she certainly did. But so there's been a great evolution in medical care here as it as there has been all over the world in terms of that. How has your, uh, your wife and family adjusted to, to life in Canada? Yeah, it was uh, like the first year was quite, uh, quite different. Uh, driving on this different side of the road, uh, I always joke and my son always says, don't, don't talk about butter. Uh, you know, he, he, the butter taste of the butter was not the same. Milk was not the same. The size of uh, products was, were not the same. Uh, even if you go and buy something, uh, you don't have uh, taxes included. So you'll, you'll get a shock when you go to, go to the till. Yeah. So it, it did require, like, a, 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 and, and plus I think uh, in Ireland, uh, when the, the first thing that kids will do after they come back from school would go out and play um, just literally any, anyone who's there. So there were small green fields. Here, they didn't, they didn't find that 
uh, much like our first state with that we lived in, there was barely any kid who would come out. They'll, they'll go to groups and they'll go to karate or some other places, but none of them would actually come out and, and play. I'm not sure if that's evolved over a number of years. Um, we're, we're, as I said, we're only here five, six years. But uh, if, if I compare that to, to Ireland, that was the big, big thing that they missed was the connection to a kid outside their house right in front uh, and playing in a, on, a green, on a green field. So they missed that part. So it's stayed, it took a few years. So yeah, well, I'm hoping that there's much more of that. And certainly the strength of Canada comes from our diversity and the multicultural nature Absolutely. of it. And there's so many ways that, uh, and in many ways, uh, wherever you are in the world, you have a, seem to care about the same things. It's family and community and, and trying to improve your lot in life with with whatever fashion is possible, that hopefully we can live by the commonality there and accept the sameness and, and honor that sameness in many ways. What, uh, what did you have some mentors or, or heroes growing up that uh, led you into the, uh, the, the world that you've come into and the, uh, the profession that you've adopted? You talk about psychiatry? Um, so I think at the beginning, as I said, I tried everything possible to see <laughs> where would I fit. Uh, but I think uh, even when I started psychiatry, I would have um, struggled. Uh, um, so my, my mentor at the time was one of the psychiatrists there. Um, and he was the one who, who helped me a lot. And he, he became one of my um, uh, big sort of supporters as well as uh, I looked up to him even now as well of how uh, Justin Brophy is, is, is his name. And he was it was fantastic um, uh, just supporting um, uh, me at the time. And it did um, help me even after when I was just deciding to move over as well. He was there, I think I, I met him a few years ago back in Ireland and he even came here to, um, I think his son was here and he, he came over and, and we had a chance to meet as well. He was the, he was the one who, who inspired and still, he still inspires me. To, 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 to remain in this profession. So how, how have your, uh, your values as a person been reflected in your, in your work and, and vice versa in terms of your, uh, the, the things you, you bring to it that are your personal values and beliefs and how you express those within the framework of, uh, of, your, of your profession? Right, so I think I remember um, in um, working in ER, the, the two, two things that I got quite sort of fascinated by one was less, this listening to stories, uh, lots of things to say. Um, and the second one that, that was picked up by, men, by my mentor as well was just that I, I was able to sit down and just listen uh, and then was able to, to just work through um, how a, a person's path could be. You're not here, here to sort of just solve the solution just like that, if there's, good, there's a path you, what you need is 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 guidance to 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 be able to to cross that path. So I think that was one of the big things that I that was one of the things that 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 sort of led me to psychiatry as well was to just be able to sit down, listen to to what the other person has to say. Some sometimes it's it's just that. Like I gave you an example of a rural part of Ireland where there's nobody a mile. Uh, and you, all you need is is a person to just sit down and and listen to what's what's going on, uh, and plus my diverse experience of uh, working in different different urban and rural areas and connecting with people from different different sort of backgrounds and different cultures as well, that's that's helped. Plus, I think a lot of um, uh, um, the North Surrey Surrey Delta area has has a lot of Hindi, Punjabi speaking, Urdu speaking, uh, and uh, uh, relate to the, can relate to the culture as well. So that has helped me in uh, developing some good um, sort of uh, bond with, with patients as well. So all of us have a story and it's being able to uh, appreciate that story. And I guess uh, the number of places you've lived and the number of ways you've looked at the uh, medical profession and from a number of perspectives gives you a number of a number of perspectives, a number of vantage points in terms of being able to relate to people in that fashion. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in, in the field of psychiatry and in the field of uh, psychology more broadly, there are a number of different uh, schools of thought and beliefs uh, everywhere from uh, psychoanalysis, which seems to have disappeared a bit, uh, to behaviorism and into humanistic approaches to psychology. Did, did, is your, uh, is your experience allow you to use all of those tools or do you have a specific uh, belief system in terms of how you, you practice uh, your profession? Right, so the fun, one, one thing that's fascinating is each person is different. When you look at the, there is no bookish picture of, a, of, a, of an ideal client. Whatever is in the book, um, at the end of the day, you make that choice. You make that decision based on what you found. And each person's um, uh, treatment is then based on what needs to happen. So you do grab onto different philosophies and different ways of, of how you go about it. Um, there's always a model of um, uh, what we call a biopsychosocial where you've got to have some biological treatment, you've got to add some psychological, you've got to add some social. So you, you, you add that up, you mix it up, and then present a unique treatment plan or management plan for the, for the client. So it's, I'm not really particularly following any, any certain um, sort of uh, way of um, uh, philosophy. It's a mixture of mixture of everything, just based on what the client needs. Yeah, so very much a client-centered approach then, it's just right. based on what the needs and the values and being able to connect with them and uh, make determinations as to how it fits. And, and they become participants in the, in the development of that plan, I assume, as a result of Correct, that. yeah. Th their participation is key. Yeah. You just cannot do anything unless they're, they're part of that. And do you find uh, with uh, dementia that there are some more challenges in terms of uh, getting that type of engagement and that type of understanding to move forward with a, with a treatment plan? Correct, yeah. So uh, someone who presents can be from mild to severe or palliative range. So there's a, quite, a, quite, a, quite, a, quite a challenge at times to be able to make a, make a decision. So the treatment modality or management plan for mild is different from, from moderate to severe. So a, a lot of the participation uh, or management plan depends on what else is going on around them because you're the one uh, at the end of the day making a decision based on what what needs to happen which involves the caregivers the families as well so it's kind of a of a collective approach and at the end of the day then you make the final final call and what what happens but yes I, I agree it's a challenge especially engagement is a challenge for those who are in the extreme range Ed, you're currently president of the White Rock Muslim Association. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the Muslim community? I've attended the mosque there a, a number of times and uh, met uh, many good friends who participate there. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how you found the, the group here and your participation and obviously the leadership you're providing there now? Yeah, so it was uh, quite fascinating when I came here. Uh, we, we thought there were only a few families, but over the years, of course, it has the, the, the community has grown quite, quite, quite a big. Uh, so my involvement began in 2014. Um, I think at, at that time, so White Rock Muslim Association was established somewhere in 2006, way before I came here. Uh, and you, you know, Asad Sayed, who's the one, he's the, he was the one along with other uh, group of people who were the first ones to, to start it, to establish it. By 2014, I think it was still um, in another part of his, uh, he had provided a space there. Uh, it was not long after that we, we got our own space, but you know Asad, he starts with um, inviting you to food. Uh, he'll, he'll say, well, let's eat, let's eat. And then he'll throw an idea and that's followed by a uh, persuasion. So a persuasive, he's got some excellent persuasive powers. So he, he got me involved in 2014, I think. And I think the, the beginning was uh, we, we, we collaborated with the, with the United Church of Canada, the three congregations there. I think at the time they were working on a refugee settlement, settlement trying to settle a family from, from Syria. So 2015 was when I got involved and I was part of the team that, so, that then eventually um, managed to, to bring a family in 2016 
and my role became so I involved, got involved more and more into um, the like day to day functioning as well. So I became a general secretary um, uh, for a couple of years before moving on to the to the leadership role. It's it's been like I've been blessed and privileged to have privileged to have so such fantastic group of people who are involved in um, uh, in the community. Uh, and I think the, the key has always been to be able to provide a platform to be able to um, uh, collaborate with community. Um, uh, so partnership with community uh, uh, associations and organizations, and then um, to be able to look after our youth as well. I think that's been it's so it, over the years we've, we've, we've worked with different um, organizations. Um, I, I mentioned the United Church of uh, Canada. We uh, we've worked with the food bank. Uh, we've run their food drive. We've run their warm clothing drives. Um, we I think you were there for the sponsorship, um, not for the sponsorship, uh, the foster foster as well. So we've kind of try and um, uh, move towards other areas as well. And um, we've. We've done asked the doctor cities as well a couple of times. We've got like we've got blessed with a lot of physicians in our community as well. Uh, it has grown. Uh, like I'm um, excited to still be part of it. Uh, COVID nineteen again has been a has been a challenge for just like any anybody else. We've we've sort of faced challenges as well. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 grown, and I think uh, we we see the growth. Um, yeah, I think you made some wonderful contributions to this community in such a, as you say, in a collaborative way of connecting with others. And Assad's a pretty persuasive guy in his, his soft and <laughs> quiet way as well. Uh, is there any uh, any final messages you'd like to leave uh, for any of our watch the people who are listening and watching today? Right, I think we, um, I think I, I'll make it relevant uh, because of COVID nineteen right now. I think. Uh, it's a big challenge. Uh, there's there's losses. There's fear. There's anxiety. Uh, there's trauma. There's unknown uncertainty. But I think if we just work together, at this point in time, things will get better. We've already seen signs of things to to become better. Three months from now, six months from now, a year from from now. But if we focus on today, just managing, looking after each other at the moment that'll be the key to see those three months and six months and a year later. The principles of caring for each other as we go through this. Thank you, Farhan. Thank you so very much for being uh, our guest on Community Connections. Thank you for joining us today on Community Connections. Please tune in to our next show as more amazing people share their wonderful stories. If you haven't already, please click on the red subscribe button below, right down there, and view our updates. Feel free to leave any thoughts or comments that you may have. We're always trying to do a better job of connecting this article. Thanks again for joining, and until next time, keep connecting. Thank you.